We all have a hidden life. Each and every one of us. We all have some part, some part of you that the people around you do not know, do not understand. Something they cannot know simply by looking at you. Maybe it's something from your past. Maybe it is a habit that you have. Maybe it's something you're good at. Maybe it's something that you are afraid of. Whatever it may be, one thing that all of us have in common is that we all have a hidden life. Now, the problem that we're going to run into here is that when I say we all have a hidden life, it's very easy to jump to that place of trying to figure out, what are you hiding? What's wrong with them? What's hidden in their life? I knew there, always knew there was something about him. But that's not what I'm getting at. You and I and everyone we know has a hidden life, not because you and I and everyone we know um, are bad and sneaky and evil, but you and I and everyone we know have a hidden life because we are all in a lifelong process of becoming. Whether you are in your 80s or your 90s, or if you're all the way down to the babies in the nursery, you are in a lifelong process of becoming. Whether life seems figured out, or if you're sitting here and life feels totally turned upside down, or if you have that sense that things are fine now, but something's coming, I can just feel it. You are, in the words that you choose to use, in the choices that you make, in all that you say, think, and do, you are opening yourself up to who you are becoming, to a you that is not yet fully here, a hidden life. It is this lifelong process of becoming who you will become. And that's true for all of us. It doesn't matter if this is the first Sunday you've ever set foot in a church or if you've been in church as long as you can remember. It's how we as human beings are wired. It's why over the last week, at least some of us in this room have thought about the changes we want to make as soon as we hit January 1st, right? Although it, logically, it's not any different from the end of one month going to the start of any other month. But psychologically, we're built, we're wired to think, this is the time. This is the time for something new. This is the time to be who I want to be and become who I want to become. I'm going to hit the gym. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to drink less. I'm going to pay off debt. I'm going to not stare at my phone for hours and hours and hours on end, on and on and on. Whatever it is that has crossed your mind this past week, it's how we're wired. It's who we are. But the thing is, if you go down this list of the usual suspects and you scratch beneath the surface, you'll find that all of them are, at bottom, ways of changing the recipe just a little bit, of tweaking the equation so that the life that you're living is leading to who you want to really become. In big ways and small, all people have this sense that the life that we are living might be good, but there's something missing. There's something that I am not. There's something that I want to become that I am not in the process of becoming. That's who we are. It's how we're wired. We are, no matter who you are, in the lifelong process of becoming. But some of you might be wondering, that sounds good. We're all built and wired to be people in process. If that's true, why does it seem like nobody ever really changes? Right? Why do all these New Year's resolutions have a hard time sticking? Why do we always settle back into what's easiest and most comfortable, even though we know that's not where we want to be this time next year or the year after that? Can we really say that we are built and wired to be in a lifelong process of becoming if we can't make ourselves go for a run once a week? If we can't make ourselves eat the salad or put down our phones? Are we really, is, is this just overselling optimism for the new year? It would be hard to argue that people are any different than we've ever been. We're all still the fearful Selfish, hopeful things, prone to chase the wrong things with our life and to hurt those who are around us. And yet, and yet, though we still are those things, 
we are also yet somehow open to see glimpses of things that are greater than ourselves, of love and grace that can somehow, some way, set us on the path to rising above the worst versions of ourselves and pushing us down the road in the lifelong process of becoming. And, and I know that as much as I might want to sit and look out at the world from the comfort of my own cynicism, to say that at the end of the day, people can't or won't or just don't change, if I really believe that, then I'm in the wrong place on Sunday mornings. I'm reading and writing and preaching stories that tell the story of a God who's making and working change in people's lives, real change, then if that change wasn't true, we wouldn't still be here talking about it. We read in Colossians chapter 3, Therefore, if you were raised with Christ, look for the things that are above, where Christ is sitting at God's right hand. Think about the things above and not things on earth. You died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. These are the first four verses in the third chapter of a short letter called Colossians. And lurking just beneath the surface here are words about God's working of grace and love and the new possibilities that are celebrated in baptism. That's what the ancient audience would have heard. Think about it. When you read, you died, that was the person being dipped beneath the surface of the water, a symbol of sharing in the death of Jesus. I know we're more of like three handfuls of water baptizer kind of people, but use your imaginations. When you read, you were raised with Christ, that's the person, the new person breaking the surface of the water back from the dead somehow, some way, being raised in the same new life as Jesus. That's why when I stand here and I baptize a, a baby or, or anybody for that matter, and I remind us, we all share in one baptism. It is that baptism of sharing in the death and being raised to new life. And that makes sense to people who have been in and around church. But then we're taken in a direction that's a little more mysterious for all of us. Because we read in Colossians, you who shared in Christ's death, you who were raised to new life, your life is hidden in Christ. We all have a hidden life. Some part of you that does not look like the world around you. Something within you has happened but is not complete, that is, already but is not yet. Some piece of your life that is hidden but yet is at work in you and through you, pushing you on to new goodness and to new grace towards truth and love that is inviting you into a process of becoming something new. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. When Christ is revealed, so too will you be revealed. It might be easy to think of that as a let's sit back and wait for God to show up kind of thing. But maybe in this season where we think about who we want to become in the year that is ahead, when we think about changes to our life, maybe we can think about our hidden life in Christ in a different way. That the more that you are able to encounter and see and recognize Christ at work in you and through you and around you, it's not only Christ that will be revealed, but you will be revealed too. You will get to see glimpses of who you are, really are, who you are becoming, and who by the grace of God you will become. There is some part of the life that you want there is some part of who you want to become that is hidden in Christ. Today and in the year to come, it is, it is hidden. It is not yet understood. You cannot tell it just by looking at it right now, but it's there. There is some part of your life that is hidden. And the more that you encounter Christ, you will be, it will be revealed who you are called to become. But the thing about it being hidden and why this is helpful is this. There is something within you that wants it. But there is something within you that does not yet fully understand it. You've not planned for it. It might find you when you least expect it. It may ask you to do something new. It may ask you to do something you do not want to do. 
It may call you to love someone who is difficult to love. It may call you to give to someone and expect nothing in return. It may cause you to be pushed out of the things that you thought you had figured out. It might cause you to take a risk, to be vulnerable, to open yourself to live life with other people, to pursue becoming someone or something that goes beyond the normal list of things that we dust off every year. Lose weight, drink less, pay off debt, less screen time, on and on. Now, none of those things are bad in themselves. Do it. Lose weight. Be healthy. Pay off your debt. Put your phone down. There's nothing good on there anyway. But there's some part of who you can be and who you can become that is yet hidden. That is not on the surface of how we think we are supposed to appear or the changes we are told that we should make every December 31st to January 1st. There is some part of who you can become that is yet hidden, but will be revealed in the ways that you encounter Christ in the daily rhythms of your life. In the Methodist world, our churchy word for this, we call this sanctification, sanctifying grace. That the lifelong work of grace is one part what God does for you and one part you responding to God, working alongside God so that bit by bit, day by day, God is helping you to work that process of becoming, helps you to become who God created you to be, that reveals your hidden life in Christ. So the question is, how are you going to do it? How are you going to see Christ revealed in the year to come? And how will that revealing of Christ in you and through you and the world around you, who will it reveal you to be as well? Who are you planning to become in the year, in the days, weeks, and months that are ahead? And friends, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be healthier or to pay off your debt. But if your answer to the question is, who do you want to become, and your only answer is thinner and wealthier, you're still going to be missing something. Colossians chapter 3 goes on. Therefore, as God's choice, holy and loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant with each other, and if someone has a complaint against anyone... Forgive each other. As the Lord forgave you, so also forgive each other. And over all these things put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. The peace of Christ must control your hearts. A peace into which you were called in one body. And be thankful people. The word of Christ must live in you richly. Teach and warn each other with all wisdom by singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Whatever you do, whether in speech or action, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to God the Father through him. These words later in the chapter are the bridge, the bridge between the idea of the hidden life in Christ to Christ actually being revealed in and through and around you. Paul loves comparing the work of grace in our lives to putting on new clothes. That's why he writes, put on compassion, put on kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Over all these things, put on love. Wear these things because when you choose to wear them, they will no longer be hidden. People will see it. You will see it. Through your wearing these things, something new will grow from that. Something that otherwise you may not have seen or would have been revealed. People may, in your wearing or putting on of compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and love, see Christ revealed in and through you. And in doing that... It's not just Christ in the abstract sense that is revealed, but also that hidden life that you share in when your baptism, you will be revealed as well. When you hear the call in these words to forgive each other, don't just hear it as be nice or this is a nice way to lighten your load or not worry about things. 
but forgive, but forgive others because it is a way of putting on Christ. Even if that forgiveness doesn't go exactly how you want it to, in that offering of forgiveness, in that vulnerability and the willingness to give up for the sake of another, Christ may be revealed in and through you, and so your hidden life might be less and less hidden. Seek to live as peaceful people. When you live as someone who may not be happy with how the world is going, you don't have to pretend that everything is sunshine and rainbows. But not everything has to be driven by the anger and the frustration, which only puts more anger and frustration into the world. It often does very little to solve our problems. I read in a poem once, uh, it was talking about all of the things that we can focus on that go wrong in the world. It says, to, uh, to only talk about what is wrong is to praise the devil. I think that's true here. When we choose to live as peaceful people, we live as the one who did not raise an army, who did not come as a warlord or a conqueror, but came as a peaceful person who seeked to bring God's people together as one. And when we choose to live as peaceful people, Christ might be revealed in and through you. And so your hidden life in Christ might be less and less hidden. And one of the final calls here is, says, be thankful people. It is so simple to say, but it is also easy to build our lives around, around our frustrations, the things that have not gone according to our plan. It is easy to build a life where you ignore the things in front of you that you ought to be most thankful for. Sometimes those things that we are thankful for are also exhausting. They are hard work. Something does not have to be easy for you to be thankful for it. But when you choose to live as thankful people, Christ might be revealed in and through you, and so your hidden life in Christ might be less and less hidden. Friends, the fact of the matter is this. In the year to come, you will put on some way of living. It's your choice. It's up to you. You will say and do things that are not just things to say and things to do, but the things you say and the things that you do will shape you and form you, because after all, we are in a lifelong process of becoming something. And my hope and my prayer for you is that you will put on the things that reveal Christ in and through you so that your hidden life in Christ will be less and less hidden. So that by being around you, people will get some glimpse. They may not have a word for it. They may see your compassion and your gentleness and your kindness and your love and your grace. And they may not call it Christ, but that does not change what it is. My hope and my prayer for you is that in your, as you continue your lifelong process of becoming in the year that lies ahead, that you will in some way see Christ revealed so that you might be revealed. And if you're not sure where to start or if you need something to measure or to judge or to make a plan, then I'll leave you with the final words of Scripture that I've already read. Whatever you do, whether in speech or action, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to God the Father through Him. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, Holy One and Holy Three, who lives and reigns among you now and forever. Amen.